Union Street Cafe. The scene opens on the Union Street Cafe. A line of people are waiting outside the small neighborhood eatery in a long line to get in. Some of the customers are carrying large bags of food. One man in a mechanic's outfit keeps getting pushed to the end of the line by the others in line as they each holler out, Not before I get in. The man then brushes into a woman customer who pushes him further down the line. My money's as good as yours. He gladly moves. He laughs. Good-natured remarks are being leveled at this man, while the other customers standing patiently in line simply ignore the confrontation because no one is trying to get over. Cars of all kind, new and old, are lying in the streets. Thugs, homeless, and the poor watch the proceedings on this dark, cold, dismal night with majesty. They only wish that they could stand in that line with their own bag of groceries or wallet filled with generosity. No alarms will be set on a car because that's not the mood of this night. No one is going to tear out a radio, steal a hubcap, or key a car because these people standing across the street dressed in the finest evening gowns or in simple sweatshirts are here just as much for them as they are for themselves. But the rich ladies are not wearing their jewels this night because compassion and consideration are playing a large part of the observance this night. And a hello is welcome from any participant as they are offered a cup of coffee or coke from the bystanders watching. But no donation is solicited, although one is always given. A smile is exchanged between rich and poor, have and have nots, but it makes the wait a little bit nicer. Although it is said that everyone is welcome to stand in the line, it is not true, because the absence of politicians say more of the evening than their presence. If you don't care, don't show up. And those that try to partake but don't inwardly feel the mood are quickly escorted back to their cars. Democracy is not just voting, but believing in what you feel and it doesn't matter what you can say or do but rather convincing the majority of people that you are true to your word. The neighborhood takes care of the obvious and the Union Street Cafe takes care of the rest. And the media definitely is not invited because they forgot a long time ago exactly what they were reporting. Because you do not go to an event with a preconceived idea of what is good or bad, but rather an open mind to the possibilities. So you see no big lavish media trucks present with nondescript anchor people jockeying for a story. A representative of the press might be standing in the line but they have been invited by another participant. But they better have a bag of food for admission 
and a short memory for details because whatever happens tonight they will not be able to report. It might be a small cafe but it can remember the past for a long, long time. The greatest interest in the neighborhood is being paid to the two silent watchers watching from an alley. But even these two individuals are safe on this night because everyone is playing a part. And as you move closer, you hear the conversation taking place. What are you going to say? And a second voice speaks up. I'm a reporter. But what am I going to do? Take some pictures of the crowd. We might need them. Be careful. You don't want to mess with those union types. But this one reporter has something the other reporters wish they had, and that is a personalized invitation from the owner to partake. Not in the sense of donating food or money, but rather his time to donate his words about the proceedings. He garnered this prize not by religiously reporting what other people suggest, but by making the short line of writers that could not report on any conservative or liberal agenda. They do not trust his word, surely, because he stands on his own integrity and says how it is. Those lists have hurt many a working man over the years and to make it says something about your character and guts. So Perks is ready to find out what is on the other side of the door into the Union Street Cafe. He had no problem walking to the head of the line with his arms empty because the people standing and watching him walk by knew that he was to play an important part tonight. In fact, some wished him luck as he walked by. Jinx, the cafe's owner, met him at the door with an outstretched hand. But he didn't appear like the owner of a restaurant because he looked like he just came off the street, bloodied and bruised. His left eye was covered with a scar that he earned by working a non-union plant that favored profit over safety. Later on, because of his injury, he was relegated to working in a tool crib for a union plant that combined profit and safety. He figuratively saw the better side of getting the job done. He has never had a regret since. The two men are now walking through the Union Street Cafe. All 12 tables are filled to capacity. The bags of food are being taken from the new customers and exchanged for hugs and kisses. In the background, you can see three or four hours of groceries piled high, the cold stuff in the reefers. A seamstress is busy working at a sewing machine at the back of the room. Customers are taking the tablecloths off their table and walking back to the woman. She then takes the tablecloth and money from the customers. She puts the money in a donation can. Perks looks down at the tablecloth still on the tables. Each tablecloth reflects the names of union members, but the dates inscribed by some of the names go back several years. 
He notices some tables where the customers have gotten up and left after only eating a few bites of their food. And once they reached the door, they were patted on the back by the customers waiting to come in and take their place. Estelle, the only waitress on duty, is taking an order from a customer, but he is not quite about his order. I'll take one for an import, Estelle yells out in even a louder voice. Mad cow on the run. Perks looks at Jinx and then at the customers who are apparently taking the comments in stride. He turns away and continues walking with Jinx into the kitchen. But all you've got is hamburgers. Jinx give him an indulgent look. You expect steak? Perks is not taken back by the comment because at this point he is not even certain what to expect. He looks down at the menu once more. Foreign aid. What's that? Jinx smiles. You'll know it when you hear it. But the prices are different. Jinx takes his comment in stride. Depends only on generosity. Why aren't you closed down? Jinx goes on to elaborate. No health department will stick their foot in here. He takes a long look around the room. A union member doesn't have a dollar. A free coffee in a row. They need a few bucks. Wash a few dishes. But you have a dishwasher. Jinx now adamantly in disgust. Made in Korea. Won't be used here. But Perk sees an obvious contradiction. But it still sits there. Look closer. A closer view of the dishwasher reveals Korean, Chinese, Japanese, and other flags pasted to the outside. Each flag has been tortured with pins, magic markers, or anything else to make a point. Jinx uses the appliance to motivate the workers. Suddenly Estelle yells, out. Foreign aid! The cafe becomes deathly silent. Everyone turns and looks at a fistful of money she is holding up in her hand. Applause is now heard and suddenly it envelops the whole cafe. Perks looks at Jinx as cooks and dishwashers run out and start hugging customers as they pull the half-finished dinners off the table. Sporadic applause continues as everyone is now clapping each other on the back. Several people make it to the table that ordered the foreign aid and thank them. Perks now looks at a menu to find that the price of a foreign aid is $1,000. Who would pay a thousand dollars for a hamburger? And a smile crosses the gruff union man's face as he goes on to explain. They did not buy a hamburger. He now relishes the discussion. They paid so we don't eat tonight. Perks looks at the cook and dishwashers as they are hurriedly clearing the table. Is that fair too? But he never finishes his sentence as the owner interrupts. You eat here, you go by the rules. Perks is now anxiously awaiting an explanation. What rules does a cafe have? If someone walks in and pays a thousand dollars for foreign aid, we take all the food from the customers and dump it in the shitter. 
you go hungry tonight. Isn't that harsh? Jinx is quick to point out the obvious. It's reality, boy. Our country gives away our hard-earned money through foreign aid while we go hungry. But the thousand dollars, we give the money to the really poor. Then the customer tonight comes back tomorrow and will get a free meal. Perks looks towards the windows. But what about all the people still waiting outside? If you look closely, they are no longer there. They will leave their bags of groceries at the door and go on home. All this for a thousand dollars? We help the unions. We help the people. Nothing better than that. I didn't mean any disrespect. That was one meal. We served over 400 meals today and never once touched the groceries we received. Why do you do it? People have forgotten what's important in our country. What is that? Jobs and people. I don't know why you picked me, but you've given me plenty to think about. If you think this is something, you should be here on the nights we serve our free trade agreements. Perk's interest is piqued. What's so special about that? We name each of our entrees and our country's employment giveaways after a president. So far, Bush and Clinton topped the giveaways. We serve up, serve up a special NAFTA souffle for them. Perk stares at Jinx. So what am I going to write? A smile appears on Jinx's face as he takes a long look at Perk's and slowly confides. The Union Street Cafe was never the story. Perks give Jenks a perplexed look as the cafe owner continues. You never had to enter the cafe. Your story was standing outside the door on both sides of the street. Rich and poor. Tell your story about jobs in America. Start with the truth. The end.